Hi everyone, this is Stacy with Blake's Studio. I am going to be painting a jellyfish today and I'm going to be using these paints that my daughter got me for Christmas. I thought they would be fun to play with. I'm not sure which colors I'm going to use yet. I have uh, the Kiritake Metallics. There's starry colors. Are they beautiful? All metallic -y. And I cut the ends off the packaging so that I could slide them in and out of the sleeve because they're not an actual palette. They're in this little paper casing, which is actually pretty handy. And then I have these pearl colors, which I thought were gorgeous. So that I could just slide them out and then slide them back in when I was done to protect them and keep them tidy and clean. Slide those out now. And then I was playing and practicing with them. These are just different blends that I could get with the, these colors. The blues and pinks and greens and yellows. Let's see, it goes this way. I didn't play much with the pearl color, this one, well, because it's pearl on white and it doesn't really show up. It's over here a little bit. It's got a dash of pink in it. It's really pretty though. And then on this page, I practiced with these, with the golds, the different golds. Let's see if you can see that shine. That golden shine is kind of a glary right there, but they're really pretty. I really like them. And then for the background of, this is what I'm going to be painting, getting ahead of myself. I don't know if you can see that, but I used my liquid mask to mask out my jellyfish. I sketched them out in color erase pencil. Got a couple fuzzies in there. Don't mind that. There we go. Then we can see them a little bit. Masked them out so I could do the background all in blues. And this is my palette of mostly M. Graham colors. I have a couple of Sennelier's and an Artist Loft Indigo because I really like that color a lot. Payne's Gray is Sennelier. Chinese Orange is Sennelier. Pretty sure the rest of this is all my M. Graham colors. And pardon my palette. I don't clean my palette when I use it. I really like reusing my colors as I go. But I did my swatch in the order in which they are in my palette. This is white gouache right here in this one. But we're going to use these colors for the water. I, I mix them up and throw them on there with white, with the water and. Um, was thinking about throwing salt on there, but I don't think I'm going to do that this time. So that, that bad baby over there. And let's get started. Let's throw a little... I've never used mask fluid before, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, guinea pig. I'm using a creative... what is it? Creative Mark Mimic 2-inch wash to throw down some water nice and juicy even so we can get that there's a little fuzz right there crazy water effect that we all enjoy and love so much let's throw that on there give it a little gloss give it a little gloss see the gloss we like that it's so nice and then I have my Let's see, and we'll use we'll use this this bad boy. The Zen Art Faux Squirrel number 10. Can you see that? I don't know if that's gonna focus or not. Focus. Well, there we go. Good enough, right? And we're gonna go in here. And we're gonna just see this mud right here, this 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 aqua color we got going on. We're just gonna make a color. Make it up as we go, right? Throw it around. A little bit of this one in there. That's my cobalt blue. And then I really like this color. <laughs> as you can tell, I'm reaching bottom on this pan. Ultramarine. Ultramarine is super amazing. All right, just throw it on here and let it do its thing. 
There we go. Throw a little dash of that in there. Which one are you? You're my cobalt teal. I love this color. I think it's so pretty. Water. A little more water. I like that I can paint over that and not worry about my details getting muddied up. Blue them in there. I like that dark over there. That's nice. I like pure color. That's an, a minor addiction of mine. <laughs> pure color. Let it roll. And drop it in. Let it do its thing. Ooh, that's a good idea too. Drop some water. Water droplets. Let them bloom. There we go. I think that's mostly jellyfish over there. There we go. I want this to be pretty vibrant. The the blue. That's pretty nice actually. I like this granulation I'm getting over here. That's really nice. Right here. With my ultramarine craziness. My ultramarine craziness. I love it. So I think I like it a little dark over there. Let's get some darkness in there. There we go. Like so. Yeah, I think I want it a little, a little deeper behind the jellyfish too. There we go, like so. Ta-da! Background. Oh, that looks awesome on camera. I really, <laughs> I really like that on the camera. That looks amazing. If I do say so myself. <laughs> oh. All right, we're gonna let this dry. We're gonna let it get all dry. That's gonna take a hot minute. So, go get a snack. Have it's dinner time for me. So, dinner maybe let this really dry completely. I do have a heat tool that I will use, but I'm gonna let it sit and marinate for a bit. This is my heat tool. Got it on Amazon for, I don't know, 12 bucks. The nozzle comes off, it has a replacement nozzle. But I'll use that in a little minute, let, this, let the colors kind of settle into the paper and really stain the page a little bit. And then we will come back to it and take off the mask fluid and get on with the jellyfish. Okay, hi guys, we're back. So the background's dry and I'm going ahead and using this eraser to slide all that off there, all that masking fluid, just get it all off. And I'm surprised because I thought I watched a video or read something on Instagram about not leaving your masking fluid on for more than overnight <clears throat> or it, it might not come off and might ruin your paper. But I'm not finding that to be a problem. I'm also, I, it occurred to me, I didn't tell you what paper I was working on. So I have this paper right here that I got in an Art Snacks box. 140 pound watercolor paper, 100% cotton, cold press, fluid paper. It's a really nice paper. I've used it before. I love it. I recommend it. 8x8. Eight eight. Square format. Instagram, anyone? Instagram. Excellent format for Instagram. But I was thinking while I was peeling this off of here and thought I should maybe video what my thoughts were. I, I've been hemming and hawing about making my very first ever, welcome to my very first ever YouTube video, everybody, um, making this video and watching the videos on what to do and how to start and what do I do and how do I start because that's where I'm at. What do I do and how do I start? OMG, what am I going to do? How do I start? Well, like they tell you, start, right? Pull that ripcord, jump out of the plane. Not that this is <laughs> anything remotely close to jumping out of a plane, but 
the stress is there, right? The anxiety of starting and rejection and and not doing well and maybe your first video sucks, which it may. I don't know, right? I mean, you guys may not enjoy watching me slide, <laughs> slide off the masking fluid, but I mean, it seems to be coming off pretty well. I was watching Think Media earlier today. Highly recommended, by the way. Their channel is amazing. And basically everyone's, woo! <laughs> oh, that's a little, that's a little, <laughs> that's a little icky and fun. <laughs> Um, everyone's advice seems to be just start, just do it, just start and just do it. So here I am just starting and just doing it, being bold. Although my face is not on the video yet. Time. It'll come in time, people. Maybe you don't want to see my face. Maybe you do. Time will tell. But almost done. And then we can start painting our jellyfish. Isn't that exciting? There we go, I think I got it all, right? Oh, there's a little tidbit right there. There. Smooth. Oh, there's a little bit right there. Super exciting information, right? The background turned out pretty awesome. I really like the variation in color and the, um, let's get a little closer. See that? That granulation, the pooling of color, the purples and so pretty i love it all right wow made a mess look at this look at this we'll just pretend that isn't there we're gonna shove it up there Shh, it's okay <laughs> and we will move on it goes this way to painting our jellyfish now my daughter got me these amazing colors for christmas and i thought maybe it might be cool to try and paint Monsieur Jellyfish with these colors. I'm closing out a tutorial on YouTube or YouTube that I was watching. <clears throat> All right, said jellyfish is like peach and browns. I think, woo, flew right out of my hand. Super excited to get going. Did you see that? Super excited. I'm gonna use this number 371 in our, let's see, what are we doing? In our pearl colors. I don't want that to glare too much, there we go. And just start throwing it down, right? A little bit of water and, ooh, stress. <laughs> ooh, pretty. These pearl colors, I'm thinking it might make my jellyfish a little 3D, which is my goal, right? to make him pop off the page a little bit. Seem a little, let's water that down, get that a little swooshy, and add maybe a little bit, ooh, that's terrible sound. A little bit of, oh, oh, what should we do? Pink, this hot pink, hot pink. Maybe up here. So, give him a little variation. She, maybe. Snazzy. He. Men like to wear pink too, right? Maybe mix them together a little bit. Do that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We need to lighten this business up a little bit for this zone. Down here. What are these? I looked this up earlier. These, these are um, their feeding arms down here. Their feeding arms and tentacles. These wispy parts are tentacles. And the thicker, more wavy pieces are their feeding arms, which I thought was interesting. I think jellyfish are so cool. Um, maybe a little yellow. Let's throw a little more water in there. Smoosh it around. Oh yeah, there we go. That gives a little variation, doesn't it? I just thought it was really pretty. I thought I'd try a 
pearlescence jellyfish and see how how it goes see what what, what happens swoosh that in there I really enjoy drawing jellyfish mostly because they're fluid animal like you kind of can't get them wrong right like a dog you can get wrong a cat everybody's gonna know jellyfish not so much sometimes birds you can get away with getting crazy so long as a bird enthusiast doesn't go whoa whoa, whoa wait a minute there <laughs> chillax that's not correct and I thought I'd go free flowing and kind of make him pop off the page a bit my challenge was to draw paint a jellyfish in watercolor and get all these details these little these little tentacles and make them seem like they're part of the painting but under the water at the same time now I've drawn jellyfish in ink and washed over them in watercolor before and that always turns out really nice but when you wash over in watercolor over the ink sometimes it washes out your your jellyfish a little bit especially if it's a pretty pastel and most jellies are they're mostly jelly right jelly-ish if you will ooh pink 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 is a favorite color by the way <laughs> stuff to know about Stacy and uh thought I lost my train of thought thought I'd go at this a little differently this time see if I could do it all in watercolor without adding any oh, I really like the combination of the yellow and the pink that's really pretty um, and see if I can do it all in watercolor without the benefit of mixed media which is my preferred way to do things because it's easier you you don't like the way up watercolor is coming out you throw some pastel which I love or watercolor or um, your watercolor you can mix in colored pencil I actually think I've thrown pretty much everything at a watercolor painting gouache gouache is a favorite white gouache especially anyone out there that's a watercolor already knows this white gouache is your friend if you want to bring back a highlight pull pull something out and make it pop maybe some yellow didn't get enough there we go and pull it in probably gonna do this again because I'm liking it but I don't I don't oh yeah on the camera that's super pretty Ooh -hoo -hoo. I like it are you liking it I like it get a little happy about this okay I'm gonna leave it a little impressionistic just a touch and we need I need a darker color I don't know what, what else to put on here because so our metallics are not terribly dark I don't think maybe maybe take a little bit of this over here Ooh, maybe for shadows right for a little ooh that's not terrible that's not ter look at that accidental color right there <laughs> I love it Let's see what happens okay because on my reference photo, which I will put it down in the comments, I, I am using a reference photo, photo from Pixabay. There are a bunch of like really pretty markers on this jellyfish, but I want to keep it loose and free. And you still understand that it's a jellyfish. I mean, who wouldn't, right? I'll slide that down like so. Give it a little little swipe get a little shape a little shape and then let's see there's a little more over here down here some dots squiggles up here like so that's not terrible we 
can, we, we can live with that, right? I like how it's separating on top of the metallic paint. And then down here, we've got the, the little, the way, the, I don't know what this, this is the, the, the top, well, obviously, the top of the jellyfish, I forget what it's called, the bell. And underneath, this is where the where it opens and closes, where it opens and closes to create that whoosh effect when it how it moves through the water. There, a little mark there, and some over here, and this guy there, and this guy here. Oh, <laughs> I was making a veggie burger. That's what that sound was. Veggie burger's done. Super exciting. I'm a little hungry. <laughs> Let's darken that up over there. Okay, let this dry a little bit. I like how it's kind of melding in to the other colors. That's nice. There. Let's give it a little bit of form, maybe, a little shape, so it looks like it's going this way, through the water, floating gently, through, there, here, and there. I think I'm going to leave that alone for a little minute, and I think, I think a little, a little bit of this. I need a, I don't have a clean spot, y'all. I don't have a clean spot. I should have cleaned a palette to mix. You know what? I might have. I do. I have a little thing I can use. It's a little grungy, but I mean, we'll just use this side, right? Take, take our pink. Mix in a little bit of this. See, that's pretty. Maybe throw in a little yellow. What happens with that? Our yellow. What's yellow doing? Oh, that's nice. Oh, I like that. That's really pretty. I was playing it by ear, folks. Throwing in some color. Why not, right? Let's give this a little substance right here. And then this guy, too. A little substance right there. There, dab that in. This guy's coming around like that. And then this one, we have another tentacle. These are tentacles. Well, that works out. That's cool. Like that. Okay. And then, and then, pull this guy forward. Throw in a few a few little offshoot guys little friends because they they tend to have a quite a few tentacles I did not pause to count them time consuming just a teensy a little bit I'll throw that right there let's see what else do we want to do Make this guy a little bigger, a little more prominent. And totally space this part right here. Why didn't you guys tell me? Oh my gosh! There we go, drop that in. And Highly necessary. The swoosh noises are highly necessary. For getting those effects. You know, the depth. <laughs> the occasional swoosh sound allows for you to create depth in your painting. Pro tip right there. Not really, just Josh. <laughs> okay, now we have. These guys are kind of dark. I got carried away over here. That's alright. We'll just roll with it. 
should be more blue and what is that see through through here maybe maybe let's try we'll see what happens right this is all experimentation this is not a gorgeous finished piece right well maybe maybe throw that back a little oh yeah there we go nice a little bit of depth and deepness there and there. Go touch of darkness right there. This guy, he wants to be darker too, right there. Throw that back. Throw you throw you back. Get back there. You're not supposed to be so prominent. What are you thinking? Maybe a little water. Ooh, swoosh that right in there, didn't I? That's okay. We'll work with it. We got this. It'll be fine. There we go. Ooh, that veggie burger is smelling good. I might have to pause the video and go eat. And then there. Don't be afraid to get your fingers in there if you need to. You never know what's going to work, right? Never know. They have these little frilly, feathery areas on the oral arms, as it were. Let's see, I could do this. There we go. Like that. Let's see how that looks later, right? We'll see how it looks. I feel like I should, let's see, maybe yellow. Maybe a little yellow. Let's unify that a bit. The dome right there. Get a little unification. Unification! That's actually pretty nice. Okay, and then there. And then, what do we want to do? Maybe lessen that yellow a little bit. Give it a little more water. Make it a little less intense. Ooh, less intense. Speaking of less intense, how about that? Spoosh, really get in there. Really get in there. That's not terrible, right? I mean, it looks terrible in there. Looks like poo. <laughs> In real life, it's not that terrible. Honest, swear to God. And then take that lighter color and kind of smash it in there to give this a softer effect. Maybe some straight up pearl color dropped in. Might push that back a little. I don't know if you guys can tell if that's super glaring because I'm using pearl colors. Oh, there you go. And pearl and not. I'm trying to do this all in watercolor. It's not that fabulous. This was a grand plan, by the way. First ever water tube watercolor video for YouTube. And whammo! Messing it up. There we go. Muddy that up a bit, maybe. Muddy that up. Muddy this up. Oh, I like that. There we go. I like a little mud. That's not terrible. Just kind of scrubbing around with the brush. Getting, really getting in there. This is a fairly tough paper. I'm sure it can take the pressure. You can take it. You can handle it. I swear to God. There. Let me soften that a bit. Maybe I should stop fussing with it for a while, right? Go eat my burger, let it dry. I think we'll do that. I'm going to go eat my burger. My veggie burger, and let that dry. And we'll come back. 
upside down. Hi guys, I am back. I am doing a little voiceover here. Because when I was playing back my my clip for this final section, I had headphones in. I had been bebopping around the house waiting for the paint to dry and just slid back into my chair and started painting without even thinking that my headphones were probably pretty loud and totally picked up every song that I was playing. <laughs> so here I am doing a little voiceover. I just kind of slid into the chair and picked up my brush and started putting in some of that muddy purple that I have on the side there from previous paintings. I was not really thinking, just deciding on the fly to add some deeper colors and get some details in, give this section some depth, a little bit of um, character, I guess. And then here I decided to deepen the water in the background. There, I really kind of scrubbed over the pearlescent color like that. And when I was all done, it, it kind of picked up the pearlescent color and smudged it around a little bit. So I don't recommend doing that. <laughs> um, yeah, I decided to just overall make the water a little more dark. See if I can get that jellyfish to pop off the page a little bit. He seemed really light and uh, you can't tell from the angle of the the camera because the light was glaring on the the pearlescent paint but not a lot of detail going on right now and this seemed to be a good idea at the time. This paper by the way can take a lot of abuse. I put on a lot of water as you can see right here and was really scrubbing around that paint with the side of my brush. Pretty roughly, you could hear it scratch, scratch, scratching as I painted. Kind of went over the jellyfish a little bit too with the with the deeper purple to soften. I was I was trying to soften the glare of the pearlescent paint so that the whole jellyfish wasn't um. So super shiny. <laughs> yeah. And then here I am putting in some of the details. On the reference photo, there are some really beautiful markings on this jellyfish. That is what drew me to the picture to begin with. And I wanted to capture that a little bit. Give him a little bit of character. Trying to even out that background a little bit, make it less um, really scratchy. You can't see the brush marks as much. Smooth it out a bit. Oh, and here I am making some some more of that aqua color. To I wanted to darken this section as well, but not as purpley as the, the the upper the left hand section wow i had a hard time getting those words out <laughs> words are hard you guys i was really liking that purple a lot in the water the overall effect is exactly what i was looking for and while i was painting this i was like yeah yeah this this works this is good all right surprise <laughs> like I said, super scrubbing over the pearlescent paint here and kind of you can see where it's dragged it down a little bit into the water. I didn't notice that while I was doing it. I was just going with the flow, trying to push that those details on that side into the back, like push them back a little bit.
And then there are those ruffly textures in the the arms, the feeding arms. I was trying to get some of the, that effect going on too. And then here I am painting in more of those details, trying to make them a little more bold on the top of the jellyfish. I really liked how that turned out. Yeah, that looks awesome. Now that I'm rewatching it. <laughs> Perspective. And then here's where the bottom of the jellyfish, I was trying to make it look like the bottom of the jellyfish, where it opens and closes and swooshes through the water. Do painting, painting, and here we go. The details in the back I made that really dark, but it dries lighter, so it works really well. Just kind of going with it, letting the paint flow and do its thing. I was really in the zone, listening to music, jamming out with like I like to do when I'm painting. If anyone else likes to do that, let me know in the comments below how you prefer to paint. If you like TV on in the background or just general music or silence. Sometimes I really like to draw in the silence. You just get lost in your piece and detach from everything and go with it. Here I'm trying I'm trying to give the uh, jellyfish a little bit of that. You know when you look at a jellyfish you can kind of see through them a little bit. Certain sections. That's what I'm doing here. That outer edge you can kind of see through. And then again down here on the bottom. And there it is. Perfect. Love it. I really liked how the dark purpley color w broke up on top of the pearlescent color and created these really nice effects. And now I'm putting in some more details. Give it that sense of 3D depth. Uh, tentacles. Yep, here we go. Now I'm going to put in all these tentacles. I thought I did it before, but clearly I did not. Give these guys some definition. I'm sorry, you can see the top of my paintbrush, but you can't really see what I'm doing. I'll get better at that, I promise. Set up my secondary camera and do some side B-roll, some side shots. So you don't have to watch the top of my hand while I'm painting. You can actually see what the brush is doing. This brush is really amazing. It comes to a super fine point, but you can also get some really big bold strokes as well. I like round brushes a lot for that. What is this brush? This is a Princeton. This is a Princeton. Oh no, it's not. It's a Zen Art Faux Squirrel Round number 10. I recommend these brushes. They're really nice. I think Lindsay the Frugal Crafter is the one that turned me on to these. These and the Mimic brushes, she really likes those too, and I'm, I'm enjoying those. The Creative Mark Mimic brushes. I, I bought the set. They're really nice. And here we go, putting in swooshy tentacles. So many. <laughs> I wanted to give it the effect of having a lot without having to actually do a lot. There we go. Almost done. Get 
getting close. And these tentacles tend to flow and swirl around just everywhere. No rhyme or reason. One of the reasons I like painting jellyfish, like I said before, is because you kind of can't get them wrong. And there we go. I think I'm pretty done. I'm satisfied with him. Thank you so much for watching and indulging me in my very first ever YouTube video. I hope you enjoyed it. Put in a few more little details here. Apparently, I really like painting the tentacles. <laughs> and running out of that purple, I used that up pretty good. When you tilt the, the painting a little bit, you can see how much color and, and detail work that actually shows up in real life. Um, the, the straight on view is a little um, shiny. So there we go. See? Nice. Yeah. Uh, that's not my best work ever, but I really like it. Once again, Thank you for watching, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video.